Hi everyone, Finn and Flask here. So today I'm going to give you a formal introduction to my first muzzle loading shotgun. It's this one right here. It's a Petersoli. It's a pretty nice shotgun. It's actually choked. You can see it has screw and choke tubes. And we'll talk about this some more. This Petersoli side by side was made in 1991. Petersoli made choked shotguns in the 90s, and I'm unsure if this is one or if this is a custom made Petersoli side by side choked. I think at a minimum it's a custom choke because it is choked so heavy. When loading a choked muzzle loader, it is best to pour the powder down before you remove the chokes to put the cards in due to the fact that the powder will foul the threading. This Petersoli side-by-side -side works best with CCI number 11 caps. The length of pull is 14 and a quarter. The inside diameter of the main barrel is probably around a 14 bore. It's choked to 640, which is an extra full choke for a 16 gauge. So this is kind of like a turkey slayer kind of gun. and. I had some problems with this before in the past. I couldn't really figure out how to load it. I didn't even realize that the choke tubes came out because it felt like they were press fit in, but when I brought it to a gunsmith, they actually removed the chokes. So I'm very happy to have figured that out. And I'm gonna show you how I load it. You have to load it different than most regular muzzle loading shotguns. And uh, I'm gonna do some testing today. Today I'm gonna be shooting fours sixes and seven and a halfs. I'm going to be using 90 grains of powder and I'm going to shoot it over the chronograph to see how much power you get and see if it's actually going to be an ethical shot for killing turkey. So because this is pretty much just a turkey gun. I've used it duck hunting and stuff like that but it's less than ideal because it's super tight choked. So let's do this. I'm just going to be shooting at paper plates from about say 27 paces is where I'm set up. So That'll give you about an idea of what we're doing. So to load with these remo removable choke tubes, the first thing you gotta do is load the powder. I'm setting mine for 90 grains. I'm doing 2F Go X. I'm gonna load both barrels. And since this is 640 at the end, and on the inside, say it's probably around 700, that's four hundredths. That's four, sorry, I heard something in the woods. Four hundredths of constriction. And that's too much for you to try to cram a wad down. So you gotta unscrew. You gotta unscrew the chokes, okay? And then you gotta put your cards in. So, so the inside of this tube is probably around a 14 bore. And the end of pop your card in and see how it's settled in there. <clears throat> right down to the powder. The first round, I'm gonna do it with three overshot cards. Then I'm gonna do four overshot cards to see how much of a difference it makes. So this one's four and then I'm going to do a regular over powder card if I can get it down there. 
Now I'm going to use 90 grains of number four bismuth because this is for my duck loads. But it'd be good for turkeys as well. Now I'm just dropping the over shot cards in. You can cut a slit in the cards to make them go down a little easier. And then you're gonna screw in your chokes. So it was first one read 631 and the next one read 1143, 1103. Let's see how the pattern did. The right barrel wasn't that great. The left barrel was pretty good. I'd say that'd be a dead turkey. That one said 37.55. Somehow I doubt that. Eight Less than ideal. Okay, so I already loaded the powder. I just put a little spit on the over powder cards. And you know, I just got to get these down. Okay. Now I'm going to do my 90 grains of shot. And 828 again. Neither of them are ideal. Okay, so this time I'm at 90 grains. <clears throat> I have three overshot three overshot cards, 90 grains by volume of number six shot in an overshot card. Nine oh eight. Got a few more on this one. And, uh, this one's pretty decent. Now, I did four overshot cards over the powder, 90 grains by volume of six shot and an overshot card. Let's see how this goes.
2351. Somehow I have a feeling it wasn't 2351. This one's pretty good. That one, eh. All right, so I only had enough uh, number six left to do one barrel, and I did an over powder card plus 90 grains by volume with six shot and an over, an over shot card. So let's see how this goes. It was 9.13. That's pretty good. This time I switched to seven and a half shot, 90 grains on both ends, with three overshot cards. That's 3584, I don't buy that for a second. That said 11, 17, 29. It was 721 and 635, and that's for four overshot cards. They're definitely getting fuller. Okay, so I stayed at 90 grains of each, seven and a half shot. I got an over powder card and an over shot card over the shot. Sixteen seventy two. Thirty four. Well, I got my last two plates. The density's all right in it, but it's not ideal. I've had about enough, and my chronograph has been giving me weird, random stuff. It's hard to tell what it's actually shooting at. I don't know. I wonder if it's getting clogged up because I see some fouling on the on the members. And it's giving me really wild stuff like 3,500, then it's 600, and then it's it's all over the place. It's hard to tell. After my first round of shooting, I went back in for a little bit and I rested up and. I decided that maybe some of the reasons why I was getting some wild numbers was because the rods on the chronograph were getting dirty. So I actually took a rag with me and I washed them off between the shots when they were getting visibly fouled. So there wasn't really a lot of pattern with what I was seeing, but I decided that the next step I should do is change powder, uh, powder loads. So I went from... Not, I did 90, I did 100, and I did 110 to see what it would give me. So I went in and I reviewed stuff. And basically what I'm seeing is the different types of cards aren't really making much of a difference. Even though my stuff was all really scattered for velocities and stuff. Because I, it's my first time ever messing with a chronograph. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm, I've actually changed what I'm doing. I just put up a sheet of paper. Well, it's actually not paper, it's flooring underlayment that I'm gonna just shoot and see how big the pattern actually is. And I'm gonna try a couple different powder loads to see what it is. I'm gonna start basically back off again with seven and a half shot, an over powder card. I'm just gonna stick with over powder cards and 90 grains of seven and a half shot. Eight ninety seven.
still a pretty big spread. Concentrated over here pretty well. All right, so I decided I had to like, I only have one tripod with me. So I decided that maybe the reason why it's getting crazy reading is because it's bouncing. So I put it on my tripod and now I have it sitting on my, my Ranger. So let's try this again. I'm doing 100 grains and 100 grains. That time it said 670. Let's go take a quick peek at what it looked like. I'm definitely shooting off to the left. Okay, I'm going to kick it up to 110 and 110. And that is as high as I'm going to go. Eight sixty. That's a pretty nice pattern. I decided to put a plate there so I can have a good aiming point. Okay, so this time I'm doing ninety grains, an over powder card, and ninety grains by volume of six shot. Is 504. So the majority of our stuff is right around here. I was aiming at the paper plate. Now I'm up to a hundred grains by volume of both. And let's see how it goes. It says 1993. I'm going to give that another shot. I was aiming at the plate. It seems as though the density is right here. So I'm aiming a little low. But I don't know how well you can see it. It's pretty dense. I'm just going to do the velocity again. All right. I'm just doing the velocity this time. That's 591. All right, 110 grains. Nineteen sixty. I don't know. Stay tuned to the very end for all the results from the test. So I wrote down all the numbers and stuff like that to give you guys a little bit of a conclusion of what this test was telling me. So for my number four shot, I did three cards over it. The first one was 631, then 1103. I can kind of believe the 1100 feet per second. And there was probably something wrong with the, the 631. Then I got four cards with 37.55 and 8.65. Then the over powder card, I got 8.28 and 8.28 again. So then with six, with the number six shot with three cards, I got 9.08 and 8.51. That seems reasonable. With the four cards, I got 8.51 and 23.51. With the over powder card on sixes, I got 9.13. Those all seem pretty realistic except for the 23.51. And with a seven and a half shot, three cards, I got two wild numbers. With the four cards, I got two reasonable numbers at 721 and 635. And then with the over powder card, I got wild numbers again, 1672 and 3400. And that's with 90 grains of each. That's what I was doing for this test. 
So I decided to go back and I went back and I did seven and a half shot. I just did one barrel this time with 90 grains. I got 897, which seems to be right in range with everything else. And then 100 grains with 670, 110, I got 8, 860. Then with the six shot, I got with 90 grains, 504. Then I got 1953, 851, and then 1960 with uh, the 110. So I kind of think I figured out why I was getting these wild numbers. It's because I think that the overshot cards were actually hitting the rods. That's what I think was happening. And that's why I got all wild. And I think some of the reasons why I was getting some really low numbers in here is because of the cards I was using. Okay, because the inside of that's more like a 14 bore. And I think when you're actually, I was cramming something in a little oversize. And I think maybe the cards were cracking a little bit or bending a little bit. And it wasn't giving me really solid compression. The six and, with the six and a halves, I got some pretty good loads. With the sixes, I got some pretty good loads. With the fours, I got some pretty good loads. I think it's all relatively reasonable. But I know for turkey hunting, you probably want something over a thousand feet per second because you got to hit it with some force. I hope you appreciate my content. And if you would like and subscribe, I'd appreciate it. And I also have my fly fishing channel if you're interested in my fly fishing stuff. That's fly, uh, Fin and Flask Fly Fishing. Just put it in your search engine and you can find it. Thank you very much for watching and have a nice day.